In this segment, we're, we're going to talk about uh, caliper rebuilds as a bench job. Um, I have a pair of calipers here that we've already removed from a car. I'm not going to go through the R&R &R of the calipers because that's already uh, taken care of in the workshop manual. But to do the caliper rebuild, there are some tools required, so I'll just run through that right now. Channel lock pliers, a pick, a couple of screwdrivers that are going to be used as pry bars, a 7 16th brake line wrench, a 9 16th socket, a 5 8 socket, an air chuck. I have a used blending pad that I'm going to use for doing some of the abrasive cleaning, some DOT4 brake fluid, and some brake clean. And that's it, we're now ready to get started. What we're going to do here is I'm going to split it up. We'll put the rear caliper to one side and we'll take care of the front caliper. We've cleaned this caliper off a little bit, which obviously you should do. You'll notice that there are four bolts here, which are the retaining bolts that hold both of the caliper's halves together. And what we'll do first off is we'll remove the, the bolts that hold the caliper together. So. Now, as you separate the caliper, it's not uncommon to have a little fluid come out. Now we have the caliper halves here, and we'll do one side at a time. First thing to do is to remove the retaining ring for the dust boot. So just pop that off here, it comes out pretty easy. Then take out the dust boot, which just pull it up here, and then we have the piston here and the caliper. So the idea now is to separate the piston from the caliper. Two ways we can do it. We can use pry bars or we can use the airline. If you, if you, if you choose the airline method, essentially it's a case of just protecting it because it can blow back a little bit, but just put, put in the towel over here and applying a bit of air pressure here and it will pop it off. But for the sake of this demonstration, I'm going to use the pry bars, which essentially we will just pry it up. If you just see here, I just caught a grip on it and we've, we've got the piston, as you see, to come out here. So we've got the piston separated. You can see it's got some, some markings on it. We're going to clean it off and then we'll give it a, a more serious inspection in a bit. So we just put that to one side. Then the next idea is to, is to take the pick. And if you look inside here, you can see the, the seal, which I've just, just put the pick underneath and peel it out. And obviously we're not going to reuse that or the dust cover. So we're going to discard it and we're just going to you know, just, just take a look inside here. It's obviously dirty. So next thing to do now is to put this all in a solvent tank and clean it. I've seen people where they'll clean it, then they'll do a little bit more tidying up, which we'll talk about it in a bit, or they'll clean it off and then they'll send it out and they'll have it replated, or people you know, from time to time will paint it with a VHT paint, depending on what your uh, pleasure is on here. But let's just clean it off right now and then we'll come back to it in a second. Okay, so we've cleaned off the half of the caliper and we'll take a look inside here and we're looking for, you know, any rust or pitting inside here. Next thing to do is to either get some emery or like I've got here, which is a used blending pad and to just go inside here and get all the remaining rough spots. Just pay attention to the lip inside here, which is where the uh, seal is going to go. It's a case of just giving it a, a serious clean because you don't want any imperfections or any, any lumps of crud or junk inside there that will cause the seal to not sit in the receptacle correctly. This is cleaned out pretty, pretty okay now. It's pretty, pretty good to go. Uh, another good idea is, is to clean off these surfaces at this stage so they're all all nice and, and smooth and there's no no uh, no grit or any or rust on these surfaces now we're ready for reassembly um, I prefer to put a little dab of brake fluid inside here um, just just makes the assembly easier spread just give it's, it's 
treat it as an assembly loop and essentially at this stage we'll take the new seal which is is in here just put a bit of lube around it and the idea is is to insert it into the groove inside the caliper which you don't want to twist it you just want it to to to, to pop into place and then you can see it's pretty pretty well smooth and in and in place and ready to go next thing is here we're going to look at the piston you can see here I'm not thrilled with this piston right now. I'm going to, I'm just going to get, get a bit more aggressive on the cleaning. What I'm doing is, is I'm looking at this surface here and I'm looking for any deep pits. Um, and to be quite honest, um, now as I've got it cleaned up, although they're, they're really deep inside there, um, I don't like them. So, you know, that's, that could give me a problem down the road so um, I'm going to I'm going to discard this and I'm just going to go for a new piston so we'll take the new piston out of its protective wrapping we can put a bit of brake fluid around it so as to make it nice and slippy and basically just lead it in here into the caliper sometimes you look out and it goes together like that other times you will use the channel locks to to pop in the pistons and, and we'll do another one and we'll see see how it goes but I've gone a bit too deep here so I'm going to need to to actually just pull it out a little bit so I've essentially got it so it's just just some of the the, the ridges sticking out here and what I'm going to do is just apply the outer dust shield and then push the piston down more and then you can just slide the dust shield over the lip on the caliper uh, and it, it sort of sits into its little channel as you can see here then then it's a case of just taking the outer snap ring and laying it in place and then just sort of going around it with the pry bar popping it in so as it just holds holds itself together and essentially that's one half of the caliper ready to be put back together again we've got all the surfaces clean we'll take the the other half of the caliper which we've already done and the surfaces are nice and clean here we will place the the seal where it needs to go in that little rece receptacle. The flow of the fluid into the caliper when it's all assembled, this is where the flexible line goes and the fluid comes in, it goes around the back of the piston and would obviously push the piston. Any excess goes through a cavity here which leads to this cavity which connects to that cavity which then would fill the back half of this piston and that is how the fluid is transferred from one side of the caliper to the other. Obviously on the caliper bolts um, that we took off you want to clean them off thoroughly and clean all the threads out so as it's all it's all going to go together without any resistance and essentially hold the the, the halves together and start off the bolts and then just snug them up. I just snug them down like this because I've been doing these for so long but if you if you want to use a torque wrench I would torque them down to about 30 foot pounds and that is a caliper rebuild now we'll go to the rear of the car and do a rear caliper big difference between the rear caliper is this pipe here and this is called a bridge pipe the fluid enters here goes around and instead of it having a cavity inside like the front one it has the bridge pipe that takes the fluid so once you once you've got the caliper removed like this pull the pads out it's a case of undoing the bridge pipe and separating it from the caliper so as you can then separate both halves okay 
So we've removed the bridge pipe. You can see that the, there are holes that are parallel. The bridge pipe does go into the holes that are closest to the mount or to the brake disc, um, just for, for, for reference of when you put it back together. So if you, if you just put that to one side and then grab your socket and separate the caliper halves. Again, the main difference between the rear caliper and the front caliper is there is no channel and no o-ring to be concerned about. It's essentially the same, so we'll do it with one side. I'll put, put one side and then we'll, we'll clean this side off like we did the other. So now as I've, I've roughly cleaned off the, just got most of the surface dirt off here, we'll, we'll pop off the, the retaining ring again like we did on the front. Just take this off and we can see the piston is here. Main, again, the difference now to, to popping the caliper piston out, we can do the same with a pry bar or we can take the air tool and we can apply air pressure into, into the line. Now, on, on, you've got to plug off one hole and then just... This piston here is really solidly... Um, rusted inside there so we're going to use the pry bar method here to do this and it's, it's essentially going against the body and going onto the lip of the piston and uh, leveraging it and popping it out like this and that's how you get it now you take a look at this piston you can see all the rust pits we'll, we'll clean it off a little bit and then we'll come back to it and see how how it is but um, it's not looking good i'll tell you you can see all this contamination where it's just rusted up inside. Just gives you an idea of how bad these things can get. Okay, with that nasty rear caliper completely disassembled, we have it in our solvent soak tank, which will let it soak overnight. And then we'll come back and finish the cleaning in the morning and then see what we need to replace and then go, go ahead with the reassembly procedure. We come back today and we pull them out of the tank. And as you can see here, there is still considerable amount of rust so this was clearly a contaminated hydraulic system from this from this car i'm probably going to have to go first of all with a little wire brush and clean this out we've had a good clean out of the pistons and you can see that on the piston we've got some serious corrosion here um, which would be quite abrasive uh, it's really pitted into the plating so these pistons that are definitely not usable We'll replace them, of course, with some new ones, like we'd already discussed. But, but you can see for sure now with the pitting why we are contaminating the pistons. We've, we've done a little bit more of an aggressive clean inside these halves of the caliper, and you can see we've got quite a lot of the, uh, of the rust out of there. There's still a little bit more, which we'll attempt to clean out now, but you can see from looking at both sides. So, what, what concerns me now is the bottom part of the cylinder where, where the piston will go is relatively clean on the walls, but the top part, you can see we've got a, a rust line here. So the next um, procedure is to clean that and knock it down so as th there's plenty of clearance for the piston to, um, to move inside, uh, in and out of the cal caliper. So to do this, I've got some, some 110 cloth here that I'm just going to uh, just with a, a regular uh, lubricant spray put some spray in there and just knock down that ridge of of rust so now it's cleaned out pretty good I'm just going to take the old piston and just run it through there just to to make sure it it, it, it it's there's nothing catching so it, it's relatively smooth. I still don't like this little dirt spot down the bottom here, so I'll just so I'll spray a bit more lube in here and just just knock it down some more. That's starting to get to be a bit prettier. There's another spot here, so Okay, so now it's time to um, 
to think about reassembly. We've cleaned all of the cylinder cavity out as best as we can. We've cleaned off the outside, uh, removed all of the dust. You know, depending on how, you know what your intentions are, you can send these out and have them plated. You know, this gives you an idea of what they come back like if you have them plated or if you're going to paint them. But for the purposes of this demonstration, we're just basically worried about the inside. We'll start again with the assembly of each half, pretty well the same as we did with the front. We'll put a bit of brake fluid in the cavity just to, to help lubricate it, work it around, work it into the groove, take the, the piston seal, just lube it up a little bit, just work it around into the recess here so as it goes in. Then we'll grab the new piston. Obviously we decided we're going to replace the pistons because the, the other pistons were, were corroded. Insert it inside. Just go down a little bit of the way so as we have the ridge exposed, we'll put the dust shield on and then compress it some more and now it's just a case of getting the lip into the into the um, cavity that it sits in like this just making sure it's all down and then get working the retainer in and, and essentially that is one half of the caliper now we'll repeat this process on the other half then at this point, it's time to, to join the halves together. Now, when we did the fronts, we were real cautious about the, 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 uh, this being clean. Um, it's not so important, but there's still no harm in, in just knocking off any, any high spots of rust here, just to make a, a nice flush surface. The final step before we do the installation is to install the bridge pipe. So it's just start off the threads. So we have one completed front caliper here and one completed rear caliper. It's recommended that you always do an axle at a time. So if you're doing one front caliper, you would do the other and the same with the rear. That way you'll make sure that the brakes will always pull up squarely and not have a pull to one side.